Taking on the World, Ellen MacArthur, page 23 of the Edexcel Anthology. It would be helpful if you could print out the extract so that you can make notes on it. Also, number the paragraphs. You should pause this video now and read the extract. When you restart the video, make sure you have some coloured pencils ready so that you can make some notes. Pause the video regularly so that you have time to write anything down that's important. So, who is Anne MacArthur and what has she done? In 2001, at just 24 years old, MacArthur took part in a sailing race around the world. She was the youngest person to compete and came in second place. What makes this especially incredible is that she sailed the boat on her own and the race is incredibly tough. Many people drop out, many boats have sunk and it is very dangerous. When she finished, the media were very excited by her story and she soon released a book about her experiences called Taking on the World. So this extract is another piece of autobiographical writing, just like George Allagai's A Passage to Africa and Joe Simpson's Touching the Void. MacArthur is obviously not a professional writer, and so her writing is fairly straightforward. She lets the dangerous and exciting events she describes speak for themselves. Make sure you note this down. Her style is simple, direct and personal. In this passage, she describes how she replaced the halyard, a rope for raising the sail. As with all these passages in the anthology, it is really important to look carefully at the language used in the extract. We will work through the extract one paragraph at a time. Remember to pause the video regularly to take notes. Paragraph 1. In the first paragraph, we notice that she keeps using the personal pronoun I. This makes it really clear to the reader that it is a personal experience and also makes it clear that she was doing this on her own. She also uses some technical language like mouse lines and halyard. The effect on this is to tell the reality of the situation the detail of what equipment needs to be used. You can also see that her tone is sometimes quite conversational. She talks about the bits she might need to repair this rope. This friendly way of speaking to the reader makes the writing very direct and personal. Paragraph 2 the next paragraph is quite straightforward. MacArthur explains to the reader some of the dangers she faces. It would not be difficult to break bones up there. It is important that we know this so that we know what's at stake. We know the risk she is taking and this makes the extract very exciting. Paragraph 3. In the next paragraph, we can see a slightly more complex style in the writing when MacArthur uses more complex vocabulary, more difficult words, and when she uses some complex imagery. An example of this complex imagery is when she describes beginning to climb the mast as like stepping out on the moon. This is an example of a simile and it shows us how she feels completely out of her comfort zone. So much was now out of her control. When she says, you are a passive observer, this is an example of a more complex vocabulary. Passive means not able to do anything. And she means that when she's climbing the mast, she cannot control the boat's speed or direction. So. MacArthur uses these more complex words when she's describing the danger she faces. 
She also gives the reader some details so that we can picture the situation clearly. She says that she will be 90 feet up in the air when she reaches the top of the mast. She also uses more technical language. She's using a juma, which is a device that she's using to climb up a rope to the top of the mast. Paragraph four. In this paragraph, she describes the physical effort required to pull the rope to the top. Because the rope is very long, it is really heavy. MacArthur tells us this by giving the detail, 200 feet of rope. She emphasises that it is a very physical struggle. The hardest thing is just to hang on. But we also realise that this is a mental struggle, that it is her will and courage that are going to get her through this, her eyes closed and teeth gritted. Show this. Paragraph five. In this paragraph, there are more technical details. She talks about the spreader on the mast. This is a bar attached to the mast. Again, this level of technical detail is enough to make us understand the details of the situation without confusing us. Also in this paragraph, MacArthur describes how the rope she's pulling gets stuck and she has to pull it free. She says, I tugged and tugged on the rope. Notice how she repeats the word tugged to show how desperate she was to free the rope. MacArthur uses a rather strange phrase here. She says that the wind rushed past us. This is odd because she's the only person on the boat. Clearly, she's using the pronoun us to mean herself and the boat. This emphasises her closeness to the boat itself, and this is not surprising given that she's been at the sea alone for so long. At the end of the paragraph, MacArthur again uses more complex imagery, explaining that view she has at the top of the mast must be similar to what an albatross sees when it flies with the boat. An albatross is a large seabird that can fly for thousands of miles without touching land. There are many superstitions about these birds. Many sailors believe them to be lucky. Paragraph six. This paragraph describes MacArthur's final push to the top to fix the rope or halyard. Here, she even uses direct speech to show us how dangerous it was and how she had to be determined to succeed. Not far now, kiddo. Come on, just keep moving. She uses the same technique at the end of the paragraph. Not till you reach the desk, kiddo. It's far from over. Paragraph seven. In the final paragraph, MacArthur tells us that she used the radio to contact her friend Mark and tell him about her experience. She again uses details like 20 knots. This is the speed the boat was travelling. 20 knots is really very fast and it's therefore not surprising that she's battered and bruised. She again uses a more complex style to describe her feelings of triumph. I felt like a million dollars. The final part of the extract takes a jokey or humorous tone. She says that Santa had visited her boat and given her a new halyard. This jokey tone is a relief after all the drama and excitement that she's described. Here is a short summary of the main points. She uses technical language to give us details. Her writing style is mostly simple and direct and uses I a lot. She makes the physical and mental struggle very plain for us. Sometimes her style is very conversational, like she is talking to us and this makes the experience seem more real for us. She even uses direct speech to show us what she was thinking. 
Sometimes her style is more complex or she uses imagery to describe danger or isolation. The ending is a humorous relief.